Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll start a series of a few videos describing the schedule groups with a bit more detail than the naming video. It will consist of five videos, each describing one schedule group. So the topic of today will be the biphasic schedules. The characteristics of these schedules is that they consist of only two sleep blocks. Two of these schedules have only cores, uh, segmented and siesta. These schedules have been used as the main sleep schedules for a long time throughout human history and sleeping in a biphasic style could be considered to be even more natural than sleeping monophasically. There are a few supporting arguments for this, of which one is that people's sleep patterns naturally tend to lean towards becoming biphasic when artificial light is removed. History suggests that segmented sleep was common throughout the year in pre-industrial Europe. Even in siesta cultures, seasonal changes to napping patterns were only minimal. It is however clear that bivasic sleep was not unique to Western Europe, as people often slept in two segments all over the world. There are even agricultural societies today, without electricity, where the people tend to sleep in two segments as well as possibly take naps. Now let's talk about the mechanics for the biphasic schedules a bit. There are two main principles which the biphasic schedules tend to utilize. The first principle is taking advantage of the peak sleep most effective during the day. These blocks coincide with the peaks of SWS and REM activity, which are approximately 9 hours apart, or uh, 9 p.m. to midnight and 06 to 09 in the morning in solar time. Interestingly, you can notice that monophasic sleep does not cover both of these peaks at once, further supporting the argument that human sleep isn't naturally monophasic. Regardless, the second principle is making use of the time of the circadian day when the energy levels are lowest, namely the night and the circadian nadir in the afternoon. So biphasic patterns either utilize the time when sleep is most efficient, or the times when you are naturally most tired. Now, while the biophasic schedules do not allow for a large reduction of sleep time, uh, the quality of the properly scheduled biophasic sleep is often noticeably higher than on monophasic sleep. Because of this, biophasic sleep is often recommended for people who cannot significantly reduce their sleep time, for example, because they are underaged or having heavy SWS requirements originating from physical activity. These easier schedules are also recommended for people with no polyphasic experience, as the adaptation process is much easier than for more advanced polyphasic sleep schedules. Less sleep reduction also means that there will be more room for error. So it's a good way to practice polyphasic sleep and learn what activities are harmful for your adaptations. However, I still want to point out that an adaptation to a biphasic schedule isn't a walk in the park. So make sure you go in prepared and with determination. Now let's talk about the specific schedules a bit. Segmented sleeping is a traditional form of sleeping which was common in pre-industrial society before the introduction of artificial lighting. It consists of two cores of equal length with a waking block in between. Segmented sleep makes use of the first principle with the most efficient sleep times, with the first core being placed closer to the SWS times and the second core being closer to the peak REM times. Usually each schedule block will be 3.5 hours long, and the waking period between them should be at least two hours. However, some people have quit segmented with a two hour gap from being unable to adapt or feeling too unproductive. The core gap also serves to prevent the core from being treated as interrupted sleep. Because of this, we recommend using a 2.5 hour or preferably three hour gap between the cores. Each core consists of two full sleep cycles plus an extra 30 minutes of sleep time to allow for more REM. For ideal scheduling, the first core should be placed around 9 to 10 pm and the second core around 3.30 to 4.30 am at the earliest, but a larger core gap is also possible. Now what's important to note is that segmented sleep usually totals 7 hours each day, but 
that's not the only possible scheduling option. It can instead also be scheduled to have two cores of three hours each, uh, but this requires a longer gap between cores to keep the sleep blocks aligned with the REM and SWS peaks. It's also not guaranteed that everyone will be able to adapt to such a schedule. Let's move to the siesta schedule. The siesta sleep pattern is another traditional form of sleeping. It consists of two cores, one long during the night and a single cycle core in the afternoon. Siestas are widely practiced throughout the world and are typically associated with Spanish culture. According to a poll conducted on the Reddit community, Siesta is the schedule with the highest successful adaptation chance. A link to the poll will be included in the description. This schedule utilizes the second principle that is based on the fact that the circadian rhythm has a low point during the early afternoon, usually around 1 to 3 pm. Because of this, most people in Western cultures find the early afternoon to be the least productive time of the day, and often take coffee breaks or eat to allow going until work is over. Placing a block of sleep here allows for better use of the natural period of tiredness experienced by the body. The core at night can then be significantly shortened without compromising sleep quality. The night core will be around 5 hours long, allowing for 3 full sleep cycles plus an extra 30 minutes of sleep time to give a bit of extra REM sleep. The afternoon core is one complete cycle. Uh, as with segmented, the core extension compensates for the fact that the schedule only contains 4 monophasic equivalent cycles instead of 5. For ideal scheduling, the night core should start around 11 pm and the afternoon core be placed around 1 pm. The core can start as early as around 8.30 pm or as late as around 2.30 am, as long as the gap to the day core is 6 to 10 hours from it, preferably 8 to 9 hours. A late night core can allow more wake time at night for night owls who enjoy night time and don't want to go to bed early. Now for the everyman one sleep pattern, or just E1 for brewity. E1 is a cross between the siesta and everyman sleep patterns, and is the easiest schedule which contains a 20 minute nap. A long 4 cycle or 6 hour long core at night is complemented by a 20 minute nap in order to give 5 cycles of equivalent monophasic rest. This schedule is a popular one for polyphasic beginners because it's an easy schedule to get used to while providing an introduction to 20 minute naps at the same time. This helps to provide experience with napping in a relatively safe setting with a low adaptation difficulty. After successfully adapting to Everyman 1, the basic groundwork is in place and it's easier to move up to more difficult schedules with the aid of gradual adaptation, which is an adaptation method that will be covered in another video. For ideal scheduling, the core should be placed to start around 11 pm and the nap placed around 1 pm. However, possibly albeit non ideal variants uh, include the main sleep at night, but the nap much later in the day, for example 4 or 5 pm. These variants often suit 9 to 5 people who cannot nap at noon and only achieve to nap after work, uh, and students with similar daily schedules. These variants can be risky during adaptation because 1. The late nap in the day can make falling asleep at night harder, and 2. Afternoon of borderline dusk times are usually better suited for core sleeps of at least 90 minutes rather than a short nap of 20 minutes, as REM is less likely to occur during the SWS heavy evening period. Despite all their shortcomings, these Everyman 1 variants are still doable with some effort because of the wakefulness sustaining provided by the nap and the lengthy core. So to recap, we have three biphasic sleeping patterns, Segmented, Siesta and Everyman 1. These have traditionally been utilized by pre-industrial humans and are a good introduction to polyphasic sleep as a whole, due to their relative easiness and because they allow some room for error. Alright, that's all for this video. We hope to see you again soon, nap well! Hey, thanks for making it this far. I want to take this time to shout out our coffee page. Donations go a long way with improving the knowledge of the community and helps us continue the upkeep of polyphysic.net. We plan on funding experiments and sleep trackers for members of the community in the future, and that in turn helps us make sure the scientific endeavors of polyphysic sleep are kept up.
And if you like our content, we would really appreciate if you click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. Also, if you'd like to chat with us, you can join our Discord. This is where most polyphysics sleep related discussions take place. The links will be in the description. Thanks again and I'll see you later.